Hello everybody. Uh, today in this video we'll discuss cost volume profit analysis. So in the previous video we discussed uh, cost behavior as an introduction to cost volume profit analysis and we explained that in such a way that uh, cost behavior is a prerequisite for cost volume profit analysis because we need to segregate all costs to either being variable or fixed because so that's one of the major assumptions of this particular analysis that we're going to do. So let's start with cost volume profit analysis. Cost volume profit analysis will have two videos. So this is part one, which introduces the basic concepts of cost volume profit analysis. In this video, students will learn the following. Number one, to explain how changes in activity affect the contribution margin and net operating income. And two, determine the break-even point for a single product company. When we talk about uh, cost volume profit analysis, there are two very important concepts. The first concept is the concept of, break of uh, contribution margin. And second is the concept of the break-even point. So, we will explore those two concepts in this video. What is CVP analysis? Okay, so it is a framework you know, which helps management estimate the profit impact of changes in the following factors. Number one, selling prices. Number two, sales volume. Number three, unit variable cost. Number four, total fixed cost. And number five, mix of products sold. Essentially, it is a way for us to get or to isolate the impact of any of these factors, what will be their impact to net profit or net, or net operating income. Okay? So the CVP analysis give, gives us a tool you know, to use so that we can predict and forecast what will be the impact of changes in these factors. And because it gives us a framework so that we can isolate the impact of these factors, then it helps managers make many important decisions such as marketing strategy or how to expand or what cost structure should a company maintain. Now, so CVP analysis is a, is a framework, it's a tool that uh, managers should know so that they are able to isolate the impact of these factors. At the end of the day, strategy will impact these factors. You know? So we want to ensure that whatever actions we want to do, it is going to be profit accretive. And we use the CVP analysis actually to, to uh, determine that. What is contribution margin and how is it used to compute operating income? I guess uh, this is a very important concept. So the definition is the difference between net sales revenue and variable costs is the contribution margin. Okay, Why is it called the contribution margin? Because it is the amount that contributes to covering fixed costs. It contributes to the recovery of fixed costs. Okay? Let's look at this uh, numerical example. So for example, we have a company you know, that its sales has 200 tablets of sales. Its selling price is $500 and variable cost is $275. Okay? As you know, variable costs move with volume, right? Because they are variable. You know? So if you are going to sell 200 tablets, automatically the variable cost that you have to spend is $275 per tablet times 200 tablets, right? So that's $55,000. In selling those 200 tablets, what do you get in return? No? In selling those 200 tablets and spending $55,000, what you get in return, you get the sales revenue. In this case, $500 per tablet times 200 or 100,000. Okay? So how do you interpret the difference of 45,000, which is 100,000 less 55,000? The interpretation is that is the amount that the volume sold contributed to profit or to operating income. No? Kasi noong nagbenta ka ng 200 tablets, gumastos ka ng 275 as variable cost, right? Noong ginastos mo yung variable cost na yun, nabenta mo, nakakuha ka ng 500. So yung sales mo, nag-contribute on a net basis 
it was able to contribute $45,000 to you, to the company. How is the $45,000? Sila ba ang net income ng company or operating income of the company? Not yet. No? Why is it not the case? Kasi you still have fixed cost to recover. Remember, the formula there is sales minus variable cost. So therefore, the interpretation of the contribution margin is it is the amount you know, that sales contribute to covering fixed cost. Okay? We don't know kung kumita ka na ba talaga because of the 45,000, a portion of that will have, will have to be used to recover fixed cost. Okay? A second concept is the unit contribution margin or the contribution margin per unit. Obviously, the contribution margin, just like sales and variable cost, can also be expressed as a unit amount or per unit costs. No? So, the terms unit contribution margin and contribution margin per unit are used interchangeably. In our example, the unit sales, uh, per unit, the unit sales is 500 per tablet. The unit variable costs is 275 per tablet. Therefore, the unit contribution margin is 225 per tablet. Okay? What is the interpretation of 225? No? On a marginal basis or on an incremental basis, for every additional sale of tablet, no, that sale contributes $225 to the business on a net basis. No? And what is the what is the interpretation of the $225? It is additional margin or additional net net uh, net profit impact that can be used that will be used no, to recover fixed costs. No? So, uh, kung iisipin mo, as long as the contribution of a product is still positive, no, mas malaki pa rin ang sales, unit sales versus unit variable costs, then it's worthwhile to send that, that uh, extra unit, right? Diba kung, kasi meron pa rin siyang contribution sa overall operating income. Now, if the contribution na margin is negative, ba't ka naman magbibenta pa? Right? Lugi ka na sa bawat unit that, you're all, that you will sell. Okay? That's how you uh, interpret the unit contribution margin. Okay? On a marginal basis, for every product that you sell, no? yun yung pinapasok na pera ng sale na yun into the business. Right? That's the net income that goes to you for every unit sold. So as long as it's positive, it's worthwhile. It's worthwhile to sell, no? Something. Baga selling something is better than nothing. If the contribution margin is positive. Now, if the contribution margin is negative, it's not worth selling anything, right? It's not worth incurring the additional variable cost. Kasi wala ka namang pambawi. No, lugi ka pa, right? So, I think that's a very important concept or, or idea in contribution margin analysis. Another concept is the contribution margin ratio. If you notice, these are just different ways of, um, ways of describing the contribution margin. Okay? Yung una, yung contribution margin na definition natin in the first instance, no, in total, total sales minus total variable cost. That's how we described it. In a previous slide, we described it in terms of per unit. Per unit sale, less per unit variable cost. No, so you get, you get contribution margin per unit. A third way to express contribution margin is as a ratio. Okay, So that is the contribution margin ratio. It is the ratio of contribution margin to net sales revenue. Okay, so using that uh, definition, the contribution margin of our earlier example is 45%. How do you get that? If you use uh, total contribution margin in total sales revenue, that's 45,000 divided by 100,000. It gives you 45%. Okay. Uh, yung sa baba naman, if you use per unit, you know, unit contribution margin, which is 225, which we computed in the previous slide divided by 500 per tablet, which is the sales per unit, 
okay, which also gives you 45%. Okay. What, what, what is the interpretation of the contribution margin ratio? Okay. The interpretation of the contribution margin ratio is that for every peso of sale, 45% of that okay, can be used to recover fixed cost. 45% of that is can be used or that 45% uh, of that contributes to the recovery of fixed cost and adds on to net income. Okay. Understand? Another another um, interpretation of that is if you get 100% less contribution margin ratio, what do you get? In this case, 100% less 45%. What do you get? You get 55%, right? What's the interpretation of 55%? 55% is actually the variable cost ratio. It says naman na 55% for every peso that you sell, 55% is used to pay variable cost. The remaining 45% is the contribution margin that can be used to pay fixed cost. Right? So these are all the same concepts but different ways of interpretation. You know? They're all emanating in the same accounting information. Alright? Okay. Now, one general uh, idea in cost volume profit analysis is that we can uh, describe the income statement in terms of its contribution margin components. Okay. Uh, you have learned last week that in a traditional income statement, costs are classified as product costs or period costs. Okay. Mayroong mga variable product costs at fixed product costs. Meron din namang variable period cost and fixed period costs. So how it is classified, product cost is part of the components of cost of goods sold, while period costs are operating expenses in the income statement. Now they are not part of cost of goods sold. Why do we need in accounting? We do it that way because we kaiba sila ng purpose. Product costs are costs that are directly traceable to a product. Regardless of its behavior, whether it's variable or fixed, okay? Period costs naman are not, not directly traceable to a product and therefore expensed outright and not part of cost of goods. So regardless, again, whether those costs are variable or fixed. A contribution margin income statement is uh, a different... Uh, it's a different format of the income statement because it classifies costs by behavior. Okay? Ang concern natin is to categorize costs into variable and fixed components, regardless whether they are, pro they are product or period costs. Okay? So, variable yan. Kung variable yan, regardless kung product or period, magkasama sila. Kung fixed yan, regardless of product or period cost, magkasama sila. Okay? So, this is the example of the difference between the traditional income statement and contribution margin income statement. In the traditional income statement, the focus is the computation of gross profit, which is sales minus cost of goods sold. As I mentioned, cost of goods sold are your product costs. Some are variable, some are fixed. Right? Less selling and admin expenses, which are period costs, which are some are variable and some, some are fixed. It then you are able to compute operating income. Anong difference? The focus of a contribution margin income statement is to show the contribution margin. Okay? So therefore, the presentation is sales minus variable costs regardless of whether they are product or period cost which, so that you can show the contribution margin. Okay? Less fixed cost will show you the operating income. Now, how is cost volume profit analysis used? Now, managers use this information about cost behavior to make important business decisions. And CVP is a planning tool that looks at the relationships among cost and volume and the how they affect profit. Okay? It's called cost volume profit analysis because those are the main variables that we're going to look into. Okay? 
what are the assumptions of CVP analysis? Uh, these are important because this will show us the limitations of the analysis, uh, in which we will address in the next video. Okay. First assumption, the price per unit does not change as volume changes. Now, it assumes that in general, the price, whether that's volume or whether that's cost or revenues, okay, it does not change as volume changes. There's no bulk discount, for example. Okay. So therefore, we are just talking of the same relevant range. There is only one relevant range that we are talking about. Okay? Kasi pag nagbabago yung price per unit, hindi na straight line ang cost function. Hindi na rin straight line ang revenue function. So it makes the analysis a little bit more complicated. Okay? Second, managers can classify each cost as variable, fixed, or mixed. And if it's mixed, the ability also to separate them between variable and fixed components. Okay? Kasi, as you saw in the contribution margin income statement, walang line doon na mixed cost. It assumes that everything can be, it, assume, it assumes that everything can be segregated between variable and fixed cost, including all mixed costs. Okay? So, that's one assumption of the CVP analysis. Third assumption, the only factor that affects total cost is change in volume. So, we designate it as the cost driver in this analysis. Okay? The increase in decrease in variable and mixed cost is fully explainable by volume. Okay? Next, fixed costs do not, do not change. Okay? We are within the same relevant range. Okay? And last, there are no changes in inventory levels, okay? Uh, meaning, whatever we produce, we sell, okay? And there's no unnecessary build-up or build-down of inventories. As I mentioned, the first key, first key, uh, first key concept in this video is the concept of contribution margin, which I think we have fully delved in this in this uh, video uh, the second key concept is the break-even point okay no what is the break-even point the break-even point is the sales level at which the company does not earn a profit or a loss but has an operating income of zero so it's it's a break-even point because at that point at that sales level okay costs is equal to revenue Right? It's very important for a business to know its own break-even point. I think that's a fundamental concept in a business. Kung hindi mo alam kung gaano karami ang kailangan mong ibenta para kumita ka, I mean, you're, you're, you're starting your business on the wrong foot or on the wrong principles. Okay? It's very, it's a basic information. What's your break-even point? So that you know what to target. Right? No? And we use CVP analysis. No, to estimate the amount of sales needed to achieve the break-even point. Okay? So, we are going to use three approaches no, in determining the break-even point. Number one is the equation approach, which is the algebraic approach. Second is the contribution margin approach. And third is the contribution margin ratio approach. Okay? Essentially, they stem on the same math principles. No? But of course, contribution margin approach and the contribution margin ratio approach are more intuitive for business rather than write down algebraic expressions uh, to solve your business problems. Okay? But they all are rooted on that algebraic expression. Okay? Let's look at the equation approach. No? In the equation approach, we have to check, ano nga ba, how do we compute operating income in the first place? Okay? So, if you look at that, that's sales revenue minus variable costs minus fixed costs equals operating income. Right? Very simple. Okay? If you further break down that definition or that equation, sales revenue is what? Sales revenue is equal to selling price times the quantity sold, SP times Q. In this case, okay, what's variable cost? Variable cost 
in total of this variable cost times the quantity sold. Vc times Q. Okay? And fixed cost is a fixed amount. So minus F. It gives you operating income. Obviously, under the equation approach, what do you do? You know the sales revenue that's given. Okay? You know the variable cost that's given. Or that's something that you can derive from existing operations using the methodologies that we learned in the previous video. Fixed costs that also discernible based on your knowledge of the operations of the company. And therefore, if we set OI or the operating income to zero, we can solve for the, Q, for the quantity. Required volume Q to make that equation true. Okay, very simple. Let's look at the smart touch learning example or the tablet example. Okay. So in this example, what are the basic information? The selling price is $500 per unit. The variable cost per unit is $275. And the fixed cost in total is $13,500. No? If you use the equation approach, set up the equation. So that's $500 per unit times unit sold minus $275 per unit times unit sold minus $13,500 equals zero. No, that's how you determine at what selling price will, uh, what selling volume rather, would operating income be zero. So you can you can segregate units sold. No? So 500 minus 10, 275, that's 225 times units sold equals zero plus 13,5. Solving for units sold, that's 13,500 divided by 225 per unit. And therefore, we conclude that the unit sold is 60 units. 60 units is the break-even volume of the company. Okay? To check, plug it back in the original equation. So that's the second box. 500 per unit times 60 units minus 275 uh, units times 60 units it minus 13,500. That gives you an operating income of zero. No? So here, what's the insight? The insight is you need at least 60 units for you to break even. Okay, If your sales are below 60 units, you're not breaking even. You have losses. If your sales is above 60 units, then you are generating income for your company. Okay, So 60 units is called the break-even volume. When we talk about break-even sales, Yan yung what is the dollar amount or the peso amount of revenue so that we can break even. So in this case, that is 60 units times 500 per unit. So the break even sales is $30,000. Okay? And the break even volume is 60 units. Okay? Here's a graphical portrayal no, of uh, the cost volume profit graph. Okay? Uh, the blue line is total cost. How did I, how did I graph the blue line? Basically, I added uh, th that equation is the total cost function. No, the total cost function that we have is our fixed cost is thirteen five hundred. So that's the intercept thirteen five hundred plus, okay, variable cost which is two hundred seventy five dollars times the number of tablets sold. No? So that's the equation. That's what I graphed there. So that's 13,500 plus 275x. And x being the number of uh, tablets sold. Okay? The orange line is the total revenues. Okay? Total, how do you graph total revenues? Then it's simply a line with no intercept. Right? So that's equal to y, which is the total cost, equals... $500 x and x being the number of tablets sold. Okay? The break-even point is that intersection between total revenues and total cost. Because at that point, okay, revenue, I mean, at that point, operating income is zero. Worth noting that if your total uh, product sold is more than 60, then you're in net income, net operating income territory. Okay? 
if your sales is less than 60, you're in net loss territory. Because uh, those uh, the area to the right of 60, total revenues is above total costs. Okay, the orange line is above the blue line. But in in production or sales less than 60, no, uh, the blue line is above the orange line and therefore costs are greater than revenues. Now, let's look at the contribution per unit approach. Okay. Uh, the contribution margin per unit approach. Basically, this is an, an extension of the, of the equation approach. Recall that the original equation is SP times Q minus VC times Q minus F equals OI. Right? Of course, you can manipulate the equation already you know, so that uh, we can isolate Q. Isolate Q, Q is equal to F over SP minus VC. And if you put words into those letters, what's the meaning of that? The meaning or the, the, the business intuition you know, is that the break even point in units is equal to what? Fixed cost divided by the contribution margin per unit. Because SP is selling price, VC is variable cost. And both of those items are per unit costs and per unit prices. No? So that, that, that is actually the definition of contribution margin per unit. Okay? Right? This is a more intuitive business, business approach to solving it because fixed cost is the amount that is yet to be recovered. No? Kasi Yung variable cost, when you sell something, automatically it's recovered if the contribution margin is positive. Right? Kasi when you sell something, you spend variable cost, then you get income naman. No? So, automatic, pag nagbenta ka, recovered na yun. Right? But fixed cost is the one that we don't know whether it has been recovered or not. Okay? And fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit is ilan bang units ang kailangan para yung contribution margin is enough to uh, recover fixed cost. That's how you can interpret that, that uh, equation. Okay? Kasi ang fixed cost in the numerator will be recovered by the contribution margin per unit in the denominator. Okay? So when we use this formula, no, we can include or enter the given amounts, no? And uh, it's a rather simple calculation. What's the calculation? Fixed cost is 13,500, okay? Divided by the 225 per unit, and it gives you 60 units, okay? So it's really an extension of the equation approach, but you don't have to write the equation, okay? It has been synthesized for you, you know, in a manner that is more business intuitive, okay? To prove that our answer of 60 units is correct, you know, we can make a contrib contribution margin income statement format. You know? So the net sales is sold, 30,000, that's 500 times 60 units, minus variable cost, which is 275 times 60 units. It gives you the contribution margin, and contribution margin is equal to fixed costs of 3,500, therefore zero operating income. All right? The last approach is the contribution margin ratio approach. Okay. Uh, essentially, the contribution margin ratio approach computes the required break-even sales rather than in units. Okay. Yung kanina, fixed cost divided by the contribution margin per unit. Ang result nun, okay, is the break-even volume. Okay. In this case, ang mangyari, look at the formula. Required sales in dollars equals fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio. In the calculation a while ago, if you replace the contribution margin per unit by the contribution margin ratio, in this case 45% as we have previously computed, then we will arrive at the break-even sales. So that's 13.5 divided by 45%. It gives you thirty thousand dollars, which is the break-even sales. Okay, so if you want to compute for the break-even 
point in volume, no, break even volume, then we use the previous approach. If you want to compute the break even sales directly, you use this approach. Okay? Of course, you can get both approaches either way. No, kung ganito mo siya kinumpute pero ang tanong pala volume, edi eh, i-divide mo lang yung 30,000 by the selling price which is 500. You will also arrive at 60,000 units. Kung ang ginawa mo yung approach kanina, ang tanong pala sales, edi eh, yung nakuha mo 60 units, i-multiply mo sa $500 which is the selling price per unit. Then you also arrive at $30,000. No, but these are just multiple ways to approach the same problem. Okay? As they say, there are many ways to skin a cat. You know? So, uh, these are various approaches which you can use so that you can, uh, so that you can arrive at the same break-even point. Let's have a comprehensive example. You know, as, let's have an example. Okay? Let's describe the problem first. So, the contribution margin income statement of Crazy Custard Donuts for August 2016 are as follows. Okay. Its selling price is $8 per unit in August 2016. Okay. So remember, selling price is $8 per unit in August 2016. And you are given a contribution margin income statement. So I'll give you a moment to, uh, uh, to check you know, the contribution margin income statement. So the sales is $125,000. The variable cost is composed of three components, variable cost of goods sold, variable selling cost, and variable admin costs. And they all total 50000 And therefore, the total contribution margin is $75,000. There are two types of fixed costs, selling costs and admin costs. In total, they are 43200 And therefore, the operating income for the month of August is 31800 Okay? Let's now answer. The question, the question is how much is the contribution margin per unit? Okay, for us to get the contribution margin per unit, we need to know two items, right? We need to get the selling price per unit and the variable cost per unit. Okay, the selling price per unit is given, it's $8. Now, how do you compute the total variable cost? The total variable cost is there, it's $50,000, right? So, how do you get the variable cost per unit? Eh, kung, kung titignan mo yung information, there's no volume involved. No, walang binigay. Ilan pa ang sinel in 2016, in August 2016? No, walang binigay. Ang binigay lang selling price, 8 per unit. No, pero binigay yung total sales revenue, right? Dahil alam mo yung total revenue of 125,000 at alam mo na ang selling price niya is $8, therefore, you can get ilan ang binenta niya. Right? In August 2016. Okay? So, given that you look at the, the sub-bullet there, to get the volume, you, know, you need sales divided by the selling price. Okay? The sales is $125,000. Divide that by the selling price of $8, you get 15,625 units. So, therefore, you can conclude that for the month of uh, August, Okay. the company was able to sell 15,625 units. Okay. Now, you know the volume already, you need to get the variable cost per unit. right? So, you know total variable cost, that's $50,000 based on the contribution margin income statement. Divide that by 15,625, then you get $3.20 per unit. And that's the variable cost per unit. You know the selling price, $8. You know the variable cost per unit, which is $3.20. Then you can now get the contribution margin per unit. So the contribution margin per unit is $4.80, which is $8 minus $3.20. Okay? So very simple. Let's go to the next. The next question is determine the break-even point in units. Okay? As we discussed, okay, the break to get the break-even point in units, what do we use? We can use the CM per unit approach. Okay, so break-even point equals fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit. Okay, total fixed cost based on this um, 
based on this contribution margin income statement is 43,200, okay? And the contribution margin per unit is $4.80. So, $43,200 divided by $4.80, it gives you 9,000 units. 9,000 units is the break-even point in units or the break-even volume, okay? Simple enough. Next. The next question is to determine the break-even point in dollars. Okay? For us to get this, let's use the other approach, which is the contribution margin approach. Contribution margin ratio approach. Uh, the break-even point here, or the break-even sales, is equal to fixed cost divided by the CM ratio. Okay? We know the fixed cost. That's 43,200. What's the CM ratio? The CM ratio is the contribution margin per unit over the sales price per unit. In this case, that's $4.80 divided by $8. Gives you 60%. So therefore, the break-even sales is 43200 divided by 60%. No? And that gives you a break-even sales of $72,000. Okay? So that's how you apply break-even analysis. There. So... I hope that uh, the discussion is clear. These are just the basics. In the next video, we will be dealing with more, more complicated problems. No, but uh, of course, I wanted to ensure that the basics are clear to you before we, we, we dare uh, venture into more murky waters. Okay. So in this video, we were able to explain how changes in activity affect the contribution margin and net operating income. We are also able to show you how the break-even point for a single product company is calculated. Thank you and uh, looking forward to the next video.